Good morning. So I want to talk about um, the importance of sexual compatibility and um, and the healing powers of sex or of making love. Now, when we are in an act of you know when when we are in a sexual relationship, the the physical aspect of it is the place that we are the most vulnerable is the place that also has the most potential or power of healing but it also has the most potential of power of of causing trauma it is the place in which we are the most vulnerable therefore in that place um, has the most potential for healing or for doing damage, um, being in, in, in such a state as, as, as being that open and vulnerable in that place. And in a sexual relationship with a partner, compatibility is of utmost importance. It is one of the most important aspects. The physical aspect of a relationship is the constant, Cons- what's the word that I'm looking for? It's like consummating. Is that is that? It's it's like bringing all of the love and every all of the aspects that are in the non-physical world into one point and consummating them. And it is the point in which you, life is created from. It is the point in which you are the most vulnerable, where you completely let go. When you have an orgasm, it is probably in this physical plane, the closest place that you come to completely letting go, completely going out of mind and body, of being completely surrendered. And it is a place where you have, when, when you're out of your mind and body, it's where you completely release control. And so in this place that has such power um, in your being, you have to be in complete trust and complete compatibility in that place with your partner. And it's also a place where you can check compatibility because if you are not compatible in that place, then it is a reflection. You know, everything is in the micro and the macro. It is a reflection of your compatibility as a life partner because if you are a hundred percent compatible uh, in the physical, in the in in your life, and in your way of thinking, and in your way of being, and in your values, then that place will be an automatic. That place will be a a um, will be synchronized with your partner you will be in sync um, because it is like the, the pinpoint of your existence. It is a place where all of your emotions and all of your thoughts and everything come into one. It is like the essence of yourself. Your sexuality is the essence of yourself. And I, I know I'm not saying that this is something that is, um, like I say in a lot of my videos, it's not something that is um, set in stone because there's so many things. That, what is the word that I'm looking for? Absolute. It's not something that is absolute because there are many people that we can be, you know, I've had relationships in my life that we were very compatible um, in, in certain things and that, uh, it was a really good relationship for what it was. And it was absolutely detrimental for my, um, self growing that I went through those relationships and that we weren't a hundred percent compatible, um, sexually. Um, Actually, most of my relationships, we weren't 100% compatible. Uh, and I'll tell a story about it. Um, after my marriage, I, um, the first relationship that I had for the first two years after I got a divorce, I had two and a half years, I didn't want to meet anybody. I felt like 
I just wanted to be alone. I was actually kind of uh, uh, turned off by men. Not that I was attracted to women. I was just completely turned off. And I, I had to go through myself and, and, and heal myself and heal my own wounds and take the time for that separation to happen and allow for it to take its course. And after a couple of years, I'm looking over there because the dogs just took off running in that direction. So there must be something over there that they're chasing because they both just sprinted. Um, and after two and a half years, I started feeling like I was, I wanted uh, to meet somebody. And the first man that I met, and this is really funny, his name was the same as my ex-husband's name, Yossi. It was the same name. And it was kind of like, there's a lesson in this, but what is the lesson? I don't know. Um, and he was also after a divorce and also kind of wounded from his marriage and his sexuality wasn't clear to him. He was attracted to, and I'm speaking of this and I know that he speaks of this openly. Now he is a teacher, a tantra teacher, and he teaches about sexuality and he helps men um, understand themselves in a sexual way. Um, I did uh, a few years ago, I think during the Corona, I did an interview, I interviewed him. So I know that he openly speaks about his sexuality and that he trusts me. And, and we have a, we, we are still um, really good friends. And I know that he would be completely open in me talking about this and the things that I am talking about, we openly talk about. So, and he also feels that um, that sexually we weren't compatible. He, he was, uh, when we were, when we started dating, he, he started exploring his sexuality because he was attracted to men. And he said that he really doesn't understand his own sexuality growing up. Um, his father was, uh, would never, they, he had no male contact, no touch whatsoever. His, he never hugged his father. He didn't even know what his father's skin felt like. That was one of the things that he would say is that he was so deprived of any kind of masculine touch that he was wondering if that turned into an attraction, a sexual attraction towards men because he needed that kind of intimacy from men. So that was one of the things that he was going through. And one of the things that he was um, exploring when we were dating. And for me, I uh, am monogamic. I completely mon mono. And, and that was something that I also learned on my, uh, on, uh, through the relationship with him and through other relationships. I did some exploring after my marriage because I got married so young. I got married before my 20th birthday and I was always, um, I was a devoted wife. I was a devoted mother and I didn't have any kind of, so for 20 years, almost, I had no, I had one sexual partner from the age of 20. And so I did some explorations and so I kind of, um, got myself I uh, I got myself figured out in that in that way I understand myself completely and I feel whole in that place I don't feel like there's anything that I've left for discovery I have always been very attracted to men I know this this is something that's been very solid with me my whole life so I don't have a question there and I did the one night stand flingy thing and I realized that that's not for me. And I did the polyamoria thing um, and I realized once and I realized that that is definitely not for me. <laughs> and so I've explored, I've done, I went to this, um, I went to this like festival, uh, like this, uh, Kind of like a free love festival and i realized that that wasn't for me i left in the middle and i went to a workshop and it was almost like a big orgy almost um i didn't participate in that part because it didn't feel right to me but i did sit aside and watch and it was something magnificent to watch i felt like i was in rome 
I really did. Like I was in Rome. It was like this big heap of people. And I realized that there's something sacred about, about there, there, there's something sacred about intercourse. So there has to be some kind of medium. And not, and I'm not saying that it has to be taboo either, because a lot of societies and religions, uh, sexuality is like taboo. You don't, you know, you're not supposed to masturbate. You're not, it's supposed to be holier than holy. You can't, uh, you know, there, but it's, it's, there has to be some kind of balance. And this is coming back to a conversation that I just had the day before yesterday with my twin, that he also had some realizations. He's putting together a, uh, a lecture about sexuality, finding the balance in between the two. And there really does have to be a balance because uh, I think that in a lot of today, a lot of society, society, there's a big taboo on sexuality and it's almost like perceived as dirty or as something that you don't talk about or something that is uh, um, dirty. And it's not. It is the creation of life. It is it is beautiful. It is an expression of love. It is uh, the holiest of holies. It is where life is created from. It is where where we get to learn the most about ourselves or a lot about ourselves. There's a lot of healing that can happen through, you know, it's like a fast track to, to self-healing through sexuality. Because in that place, if you are in, in a compatible partnership, then you are being completely accepted. You're naked, naked physically, but you're also naked emotionally and, um, and everything is out. You are being completely vulnerable with another person and in complete trust. And that person is in, when it's compatible, then that person is in complete acceptance of you. And in that way, you become an acceptance of yourself. So there's a lot of self-healing um, that can be done through uh, having the right partner, uh, the right sexual partner, somebody that is loving and compassionate and, and loves you. And that is why um, casual sex can be more harmful than soothing. Casual sex, you know, and then let's say casual sex and then that partner leaves you you know, you go and you do a one night stand and then that partner doesn't want to have anything to do with you the next day, that can be so harming and that can really like, um, harm your self image, who you are, because you have been the most vulnerable that you can be with this other person. And then you get, um, pushed away. It's like they're pushing away your being or who you are or what you are, your self-worth is like shattered from it. And, and that is why the, the sex is sacred. Sex is something that you have with a partner that you trust that will be there for you uh, respectfully, that um, understands you. And another thing with the compatibility is what I've realized is that if, if, and this is something that I realized with the same sexual partner and also uh, something recent that has happened, um, that when you're not compatible sexually, then you start getting turned off of wanting to have sexual relationship, sexual, sexual relations with that partner. And if you're in a relationship, let's say a mon monogam monogamic relationship with somebody and you're not compatible and you start not wanting to have sex with that person which is which is uh, uh, the natural outcome of not not being compatible sexually you know if for instance with my sexual partner that I was talking about that 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 I went out with after you know we were we were together for a couple of years and he wanted to explore far more because he needed to explore um, his sexuality in, in order to understand it and he wanted to explore it in ways that I didn't feel comfortable exploring it and so then I hindered his sexuality but not only did I hinder his sexuality 
my sexuality became it became uncomfortable because I didn't I started started not wanting so much sex because I felt in that place and you see this was years ago and nowadays it would be completely different but I didn't you know it would have been it, it would have been I, I, you know it would have been realized that it was incompatible from the get-go but that was part of the becoming a part of understanding you have to go through those things to be able to understand them and so I started less and less wanting to have a sexual relationship with him because in the act itself there were things that were happening that I wasn't comfortable with and that I would have to say no to or or avoid and so then it puts already on the whole relationship a strain um, because the partners are not satisfied within the relationship or their needs are not being filled or their expectations or you know expectations um, but also, you know, the, the boundaries were going over boundaries or you're not feeling accepted completely for him, not feeling accepted completely in what he wanted or in who he was or in his path. And eventually, um, we did, I think that, that it was, there were so many different thing, reasons why we ended up splitting because we weren't compatible in the, in the big picture, um, but that was also an uh, uh, that also added to it. So, with with um, your sexuality is really like your most sacred inner uh, being. It's it's your most holy of holies. It's who you are. It's your expression. It's the expression of your body and your soul. It's the place from which you make children. It is it is, and and think about it also if you if you easily give out your sexuality to whoever comes along or in order to try to get love first of all sex and love are not the same thing um, sex can be an expression of love but it's not the same thing but it's a potential to also be harmful giving out your sexuality in places uh, harmful to yourself giving out your sexuality in places that um, are not in a committed, uh, respectful um, relationship where the other person um, is in, in acceptance of you and who you are and what you feel. I'm going to make my way over this fence. And so it, it has the potential to really build you up, but it also has the potential to really break you down because of just what it is, you know, being that open and vulnerable in that place um, by the nature of the act itself. There was another point that I was going to make here, but I feel like I don't really remember. <laughs> so, so I want to thank you for watching and... Um, I'm going to do a few more on this series. There's, there's so much more that I have to say about sexuality, um, about porn, pornography, and how it it completely um, t it, it, it's it's a detrimental. And there is a, a pornography generation now. People that are addicted to pornography, which is really. Uh, um, I'm at a loss for words right now. So I'm going to do another video about pornography and how detrimental it is and and the addiction to it. And if you, have you ever noticed that when you uh, are with a man or a woman, but, but mainly when you're with a man that learned his sexuality through pornography, it is completely different. The, sex, the, the, the act of making love is completely different than through a man that learned it through touch and feel. It's a complete different um, um, way of looking at it. When it's through pornography, when a man that learned his sexuality through pornography, it's all about the poses and lifting legs up here and there and all that. And when you're with somebody that really learned it from the inside, from the gushy part of it, it's like, uh, it's just like smooth and it's caressing and it's loving and it's like, like velvet okay 
there. I'm ending STR.